Namaste Sarasati Devi Goravani Pricharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Desatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So last night we were discussing, we were introducing this wonderful pastime which took place, which is recounted for us in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam, how Narada Muni came and delivered the two groups of sons of Daksha, Prajapati Daksha. So the first group, who were the, the larger group, 10,000 sons, it is described in some detail how Narada Muni preached to them. And he used an allegorical approach. Just as we see in the fourth canto, when Nar Narada is preaching to uh, Prachini Barishat, at that time Narada also uses an al allegory and he tells him about Puranjan. <laughs> right? If you know the fourth canto, you've read about the story of Puranjan. Puranjan means one who lives and enjoys in the body. So, uh, 
Narada Muni was telling Prachinibari about Puranjan and then Puranjan, uh, or rather Prachinibari shot after some time, he turned to Narada and said, Oh, now I begin to understand that Puranjan is me. You're talking about me. So here also in the sixth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Narada Muni is again using an allegory, an allegory and he explained to the 10,000 sons of Daksha, he told them about 10 different objects or 10 different uh, things which he wanted them to consider. And uh, I'll just have to read it to you. There are 10 different things mentioned. Uh, he said, first of all, he said, there's a kingdom in which there's only one person. Let's find it. Okay. Here we are. You have not seen the extremities of the earth. There is a kingdom where only one man lives and where there is a hole from which, having entered, no one emerges. A woman there who is extremely unchaste adorns herself with various attractive dresses and the man who lives there is her husband. In that kingdom there is a river flowing in both directions, a wonderful house made of 25 materials, a swan that vibrates various sounds and an automatically revolving object made of sharp razors and thunderbolts. You have not seen all this and therefore you are inexperienced boys without advanced knowledge. How then will you create progeny? <laughs> right? Remember? The, the 10,000 young men had come there to perform their austerity with the idea that they will return home and create progeny. So Narada Muni is telling them, you know, you're inexperienced young men. You have not seen all of this. Right? So what is he talking about? First of all, he talks about, you have not seen the extremities of the earth. That is mentioned also in the uh, 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. the, the, the field, the body is known as the field of activities. Right? Shitra, Shitrakna. There's the Shitra, the field, and the Shitrakna, the knower of the field. Right? There are two knowers of the field. There's a soul and there's a super soul. And the field is the body, the field of activities compared to a field. Just like the farmer goes to the field and according to his activities, he will harvest whatever according as you sow, so shall you reap, says the Bible. Chinese people have a saying, Huh? If you plant melons, you harvest melons. If you plant jong, jong, beans, you harvest beans. Jong do da do, dong, dong, jong gua da gua. Right? This is the Chinese saying traditionally. So, as you sow, so shall you reap. In Hindi, they say the same thing. Jai sa karega, ai sa barega. Right? Hindi. So, the same principle is there and this is understood 
for everyone. The field of activities is the body. And as we use this body, we get certain results. So Narada Muni wants these 10,000 young men to understand the principle. How, what is the proper use of this body? How to use it properly? This, is, this has to be understood. So, the body is, of course, temporary place, but still, as Prabhupada says, you have to make the best of a bad bargain. The body is certainly a bad bargain, but we can use it effectively for the service of Krishna. So, especially having achieved the rare human form of life, it's important to use it properly. Uh, Srila Prabhupada explains that the temporary nature of the material world. And these young boys, they were intent, they were thinking that their duty was to create progeny. Prabhupada said, it's simply trouble. Why they should take so much trouble? There's difficulties and problems, so many unpleasant things take place and we have to be bothered by all them just for some material, sit just to create some material situation, to bring some more living entities into the material world, to experience more the nature of the material body. So the material body is the earth. Then the second thing which was described, he said, there's only one male. So that's not hard to understand, right? We can guess like that, that there's one supreme over everyone. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita they say, Ekala Ishwara Krishna, or Sabritya. There is one supreme controller, all others are his servants. So there's one Purusha, and we are all Prakriti. We are thinking we are Purusha, but actually we are the Prakriti, superior Prakriti. That is also described in the Bhagavad Gita. The elements of the material nature are the inferior Prakriti, and the living entities are the superior prakriti, para prakriti, apara prakriti. But prakriti, we are not purusha. We are under that illusion. That is our conditioning, that we are thinking ourselves to be the enjoyer. And that is the problem with material life that we're thinking the material nature is there for our enjoyment. But actually there is one over all of us, that one Supreme Lord. He is the real male. We are all female because we are all the Prakriti. We are meant for the enjoyment of the Supreme Lord. There's a, they, there's some people tell that on one occasion uh, Mirabai wanted to meet one of the Goswamis. No, Mirabai is a great devotee who worshipped Krishna, wrote many songs about Krishna. So it is said that Mirabai, she she wanted Jai Jagannath she wanted to meet with one of the Goswamis, but the Goswami said, I cannot meet any woman. And she sent back a message saying, I thought there was only one male in Vrindavan. I thought Krishna was the only male. So when he heard that, he thought, you know, she's not on the bodily platform. 
So he agreed to meet her. So this is the principle that the idea, our bodies, male and female, but we are all prakriti, we are all subordinate to Krishna. There is one supreme purusha and we are all his servants. So this is explained by this analogy of Narada Muni. The only subject is the Supreme Lord. He is full of all opulences. He's everywhere. He knows everything. Right? We are tiny parts of the Supreme. But we have a relationship with Him. Then it's described there was a hole from which having entered one does not return. So of course if we go back to the spiritual world we don't come back to this material world. One who enters my abode, he never comes back again to this material world. The great souls who are yogis in devotion, they never return to this material world because they know it to be a temporary place of misery. In the same way, those who go down to Patala Loka, they stay there. They take birth again and again in various demoniac species of life. So this is a hole from which you go into it, you never come out. Just like an animal falls in the well, you don't get it out of the well very easily. You know, you're, if you go on the Brajam, uh, Brajamandal Parikram sometime, you know, it's, you know, you walk for a month in the different forests of Vrindavan. And so the devotees, they camp out every night. And so every morning you have to take your bath in the fields. So one of the, one devotee, I don't know, his name's, his name's Govardhan. You know, he's really big, you know, he's a big sized man. He's from America, from Gita Nagari. Oh, that's his name, Gita Nagari. I think his name is Gita Nagari. Anyway, he, he was on the Parikrama and he's big, heavy, you know. And he was in the Parikrama and he went across the field one morning to take his bath. And some of the farmers were in the field and they were shouting at him, you know, hey, hey, you, you, you know. And he was going, oh, you know, don't bother me, you know. <laughs> and he was walking and all of a sudden, crash, you know. He went, fell in the well, you know. They were warning him, you know, but sure. <laughs> he wasn't watching and he went right into the well. And, and not easy to get him out, you know. And of course he broke some bones and stuff like that, but somehow, somehow he made it and survived. Yeah. Well, but the, the animal falls in the well, nobody tries to get the animal out, you know. He was a devotee so they, they made great efforts, <laughs> they got him out of the well with great difficulty. But the animal, poor animals, they stay, they, they, don't, they don't get out the well. So material life is like that. Prahlad Maharaj also told his father that because he was so materialistic, the father of Prahlad, Prahlad told his father, you like the animal in the well. He said, better you go to the forest. Don't just remain in the the well of materialistic life. Oh, so this, of course, this is the Vanashram system that people should retire from the material business and go to the Krishna consciousness movement. Take shelter, not in the forest, but in the Krishna conscious centers become active, fully engaged in Krishna service in the Krishna conscious centers. That is 
real renounced life. And that can save us from the, the well of material life. Okay, so that's the, the well. Then it was described, there's a woman who's very unchaste. And she's accustomed to wearing many different dresses. So we see, you know, in the modern society, how people are very influenced, very conscious, fashion, and they want to be in the latest fashion, the latest dresses, the latest attire. Why? To attract the minds of the materialistic men. All right? This is generally the, the principle. So Prabhupada explains that for devotees, we don't have to keep changing the dress. We have our dress. We have the sari, we have dhoti and so a kirta like that. We don't have to worry about trying to keep up with the fashion to be modern or anything like that. Yeah. Haircuts, you see men now, they have all these fancy haircuts, you know. And so, devotee, we have our same haircut, you know, shaved head with a shika, you know. We don't try to keep up with the fashion. We're already fashionable, right? They're trying to keep up with us. They're trying to catch up. Our fashion is the fashion of the spiritual world. People, what people would ask, well, how do you dress in the spiritual world? Prabhupada, just like our devotees dress, this is how people in the spiritual world dress. But unchaste people, unchaste women, you know, they want to be more fashionable. And Prabhupada talks about the, the topless and the bottomless dress and so on, just to try to attract the minds of the materialistic men. So, this woman is described and she is compared to the unchaste intelligence. When our intelligence is not properly focused and controlled on the Supreme Lord, then it's like that. It's inf just like the unchaste woman. We have to learn to control the mind and the intelligence. This is Krishna consciousness, the steady mind. Bhajahari mana Sri Nanda Nandana Abhaya Charanara Vindure. We sing this song about worshipping Lord Krishna with our mind. Maharaj Ambarish also Abhay. Huh? Um, Savaimana Krishna Padara Vindayor. The very beginning of his devotional practice was to fix the mind on Krishna. So, when our intelligence is chaste, then we, have, we will fix our mind on the Supreme Lord Krishna. And we will not be attracted to thoughts of sense gratification and worldly pleasure. Then was described, there is a river flowing in both directions. Material nature functions in two ways, creation and destruction. So th this way the river is flowing in two ways. There is the creation and then flows the other way, destruction. We should understand the nature of the material existence. Therefore, we see in different spiritual paths, they don't try to remain in this world simply for sense gratification. Even the Buddhists, they talk about nirvana, going beyond the material world, out of birth and death, to nirvana, and the impersonalist, Shankaracharya, he would, he would promote Brahman Satyam, Jagat Satyam, Jagat Mitya. Brahman Satyam, Jagat Mitya. The Brahman is truth and the material world is false.
So the idea is go to the truth. Tamasima Jyotir Gama. Don't remain in the dark. Go to the light. Right? This is the principle of all spiritual practice. To get out of this material existence because we understand it to be a temporary creation. Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita, Buddha um, Buddha Praliyate. Buddha Bhava Praliyate. Buddha Bhava Praliyate. Right? The creation and destruction again and again. Again and again the day comes and again the night falls. So this is material world. This is not the real home. Therefore Krishna comes at different times in different avatars in order to try to attract us out of this material existence. So this river is flowing in two directions. The banks of the river are compared to austerity and knowledge. Gyan and Vairagya. These are two very important things, two very important aspects of spiritual life. We have to have some knowledge, some understanding, and we have to also be willing to accept some austerity. Lord Rishabdev told his, his sons, Lord Rishabdev only had a hundred sons. But he gave them the same kind of a message. Prabhupada was fond of preaching one particular verse from Rishabdev's teaching. Nayam de ho de ha bajam niraloke kushtam kamarna hati vid bujam ye te jo divyam putrakayena sattvam shudayat yasmat brahmasokyam tvanantam. Rishabdev is telling his 100 sons. Don't just simply worry about sense gratification because that pleasure of sense gratification is there even for the foolish animals like the pigs which eat stool. People are all working hard for the same pleasure of the stool eating hawk. R Lord Rishav Dev says, we should use this human form of life to do some tapasya, some austerity. And by doing austerity, you'll get purified. And with that purification, you can experience real pleasure. We do not know what is real pleasure. We are thinking we are happy. We are thinking we are enjoying. People are so much in illusion. What is happiness? Trying to satisfy the senses. But real happiness comes from within. And Narada Muni, by preaching, by, by introducing these different analogies to the 10,000 sons of Daksha, he's encouraging them all to look within and to see the soul, to see the real self. It's only offering the temporary so we have to cultivate Gyan and Vairag. Vasudeve Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Gyana Yati Asu Vairagyam Gyanam Chayad Ahaitukam. By practice of Bhakti Yoga, one automatically acquires causeless. Okay, so the river, and then the next thing he described was a house of the 25 elements. The material nature is made up of 25 elements, right? The material world. It's also described to us in Bhagavad Gita, and in more detail it's described in Srimad Bhagavatam, where the process of creation is recounted to us in the second and third cantos. So the 25 elements of material nature, uh, one should understand 
where these elements come from. Not just simply think of enjoying the elements of the material world, but we should understand how, where, did they, where did they come from? How did they get here? Who arranged all of these different elements of the material nature? We're very inclined to enjoy the material nature. We enjoy living in nice houses, nice apartments. We enjoy riding in nice cars and so on. But we should think, who provides all of these different things? From where does it all come from? This is the thinking of a devotee. We understand the glory of Lord Krishna, how he arranges all of these different elements. It's all here and it's actually meant for the service of Krishna. But we're taking it for our own enjoyment. We're thinking it's for ourselves. We're trying to dominate. As I said, we are also Prakriti, but we are superior Prakriti. The inferior Prakriti does not have consciousness. The elements of the material nature, the gross elements, they're available for us. We can use them as we like. We can use them to build homes and we can at the same time, we can destroy the home. We can build cars and we can wreck cars. We, material nature is there at our disposal. But that material nature actually is Krishna's property. Ishapanishad teaches us, Ishavashyam idam sarma yadkincha jagat. Everything animate and inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. One should accept, therefore, only those things necessary for himself. One should not accept more, knowing well to whom it all belongs. So this is the Ishyavashya principle. We want to be guided by that principle. So the 25 elements, we have to understand who is the cause of these elements and what is the effect of these elements. Ultimately, it's all under the control of the one Supreme Lord. Then it was mentioned, there's a swan and the swan is vibrating special, the source of what Swan is vibrating particular mantras. So Swan is significant in the sense that the Swan knows the art of separating milk and water. The Swan can take the milk and leave the water. In the same way that the Haryasvas, these 10,000 sons of Daksha, when Narada Muni told them about the swan, which was vibrating sacred mantras, sacred sounds, they understood that this swan was able to distinguish between matter and spirit. And he would, the, 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 the swan is engaged in vibrating the sound of the mantras from the scriptures, it's important that we have to read, we have to hear the scriptures regularly. We have to hear the spiritual sound vibrations. In the case of the sons of Daksha, it mentions they were vibrating Om. But in this modern age, Lord Chaitanya has come and he has taught everyone to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Om is the sound representation of Krishna. We are chanting directly the name of Krishna in the form of the Maha Mantra. So this swan is very important uh, 
In the purport, Prabhupada's purport is very interesting in this particular case. He, he talks about how people idolize the Western culture. They think the Western society has everything. You know, people are so drawn to countries like Australia and America and England. They think these Western civilizations have really got so much more to offer. But this is all totally wrong. That they're simply, they've created the most hellish civilization. Their culture is simply McDonald's and KFC and Coca-Cola and all this garbage. And people are looking up to this kind of civilization. It's so mad, so crazy. People are so blind. They do not know what is really an advanced civilization. We have to learn to discriminate between matter and spirit. What is actually good and what is garbage. Hmm. For most people, they're attracted to the garbage. The crows, right? Place of pilgrimage for the crows, the Western civilizations with all their culture. And then, uh, Narada Muni had spoken about a physical object made of sharp blades and thunderbolts. The allegorical understanding of this object is, this is referring to time. Time is like sharp blades and thunderbolts. Because, you know, just like if you have a razor blade, it's meant for cutting the hair on the... But if you don't use it very carefully, you create a lot of trouble. You, you can give yourself a bad cut. They're very dangerous. So razor blades can give you a a lot of cuts, a lot of trouble. In the same way, time, if it's not handled carefully, it will bring disaster on us. And particularly so when we're in the human form of life. Because this human form of life is the crossroads for us. Which way are we going to go? Are we going to go up? Are we going to go down? Are we going to come back? Where do you want to go? They said, in Alice in Wonderland, when Alice went into the Wonderland, they asked, where, she said, where do I go from here? They asked her, where do you want to go? She said, well, I don't really know. Then, it's, then it doesn't really matter where you go, does it? If you don't know where you're going to go, you have to know where we want to go. And then we have to do something about it. We have to act properly. So this time, Jai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ki. Well, this time is a very precious thing. Don't waste it. All the cultures, they speak about this. Prabhupada quotes Chanakya Pandit. You can buy gold. You cannot buy one moment of time. In China also we say, time moves like an arrow. You fire an arrow, you know, you, you, you don't see it move. It moves so fast. You just hear it, hit the target. So time is like that, you know. The life is gone so quickly, so fast. You know, we we, we have to be very careful how we use the time. Use it for the most valuable thing. And that is taking part in Krishna conscious activities. Doing Krishna karma. 
not vikarma. Vikarma is our acts against the scriptures. But Krishna karma is akarma, acts according to devotional service, which transcend the material nature. So that is proper use of time. And then the, the final thing, uh, Narada Muni says, how could one ignor ignorantly defy one's own father? So the Haryasvas, the sons of Daksha, understood this to be that the real father is not just simply the seminal father, but our real father are the scriptures, because it's the scriptures which direct us in how to properly act and how to live and what should be our proper behavior. The scriptures are the real father and we have to follow the order of the Shastras. So the, Haryas, the sons of Daksha, they understood the importance of following the scriptures carefully. One who doesn't have faith in, in the scriptures, yashastra vudim utshrujya vartate kamakarata nasasadim avapnoti Nasukam na paramgatim. If, if we don't follow strictly, if we're not faithful to the scriptures, we can never be happy. We can never achieve the supreme destination and we can never have perfection. So very important for us to know the instructions of our Father. Therefore, we have to hear the scriptures regularly, that we have the program, right? to hear carefully. So, in this way, Narada Muni was describing these different things to the sons of Daksha, and he was encouraging them to take to the path of enlightenment. Don't miss this valuable opportunity. Having achieved this rare human birth, don't waste it on sense gratification because that's available even for the pigs that eat stool. We should want the higher pleasure. Krishna speaks about the param dristva, the higher taste. We have to awaken that taste. We have to awaken it by hearing and chanting in the association of devotees. The Krishna conscious program process is very sublime and practical for this age. Of course, people all, they will always make some excuses that Oh, come on, I have my family. You have solved my problem. How to maintain my family? I have to have my eating and sleeping. Yes, that has to go on to some extent. But that is not the goal of life. That is all provided by nature. Every, everyone is eating. The animals are eating. Prabhupada said big elephants in the jungle, they get their food and the little insects, they also get their grains every day somehow. Somehow or other everyone's being provided for. That's not just simply the goal of life, just to solve the eating problem and the sleeping problem. The goal of life is to awaken the consciousness, to understand our what, where we want to go. So this very important for us that we understand the urgency to become Krishna conscious. We don't waste a valuable opportunity. It's rare to get the human birth and it's even more rare to get association with devotees. Because in the association of devotees, 
we can cross over the ocean of birth and death by simply taking part in Lord Chaitanya's program, chanting and dancing and taking prasadam. Okay, any questions? Yes, Prabhu? Hare Krishna? Oh, why you ask a stupid question? Why you ask a stupid question like that? <laughs> if you think it's a stupid question, please don't answer <laughs> Well, I can't. That's why I have to say it's a stupid question. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what... Well, I'll tell you what Prabhupada said when people said like that. He said, why are you worried how you got here? Worry how to get out. Right? Instead of worrying how we came here, just understand the easiest thing. To understand how we got here, that's the most difficult thing. I can't begin to explain it. It's the most hard, it's the hardest thing to understand how we got here. But the easiest thing to understand is how to get out. Right? Just simply by chanting and simply taking part in Lord Chaitanya's movement. We can get out. We can go back to God. Just like you get a disease. Right? You worried why you, how you got the disease? Can you get the disease again? Are you worried to get it again? You're worried just how do I get cured? You just want to get cured, right? That's the main thing. Just cure me of the disease. I'm not worried how I got it. I'm not worried can I get it again. I just want to get cured now. So the Krishna consciousness is like that. Just understand, Lord Chaitanya has come to teach all of us. We can get out of this material world. We just follow the program. Chanting and dancing in Krishna consciousness. But how we got here and will we come here again? I don't know. But Lord Chaitanya says definitely we can go back. And we don't need to come here again. But we have independence. We have free will. Krishna doesn't force us. But we have to really want to go back. We have to want to be with Krishna. But if we become independent, if we rebel against Him, then we'll come here again. We'll come back here. We have free will. Krishna doesn't take away our free will. We have that independence. Either Krishna or Maya. As soon as we want Maya, we come here. But when we choose Krishna, we can go back there. We can be with Krishna. We can stay with him forever in Krishna consciousness. So we have to cultivate our Krishna consciousness. We are the tatasta. We are the marginal energy. So we have that independent, we have free freedom to be under either the, the spiritual energy or the material energy. It's 
our choice. Krishna doesn't force us to love him. He gives us the free will. We have to decide, do we really want to love Krishna? Do we really want to be with him? Or are we just trying to get away from the suffering? Well, that's one reason. But if, if we really develop love for Krishna, then you can go and be with Krishna and you can stay with Krishna forever. You never want to leave him again. Just like once somebody goes into the prison, you know, intelligent person, somehow or other they got into crime and they get arrested and they get put in prison. And once they've been in prison one time, they never want to go in prison again. Right? They come out. They'll never steal again. But sometimes you get people, they steal again and they steal again and they go to prison again and they never learn. And so it's like that also with the souls. Some souls, they go back to Godhead, they're, just, they're liberated, nitya mukta. They go back into the spiritual world, they stay with Krishna forever, never come back here. We said the yogis in devotion, they never come here again. But there's others, they're not convinced, they're not ready. So Krishna, he wants to see that we have that real desire to be with him. We have to develop our full attraction for Krishna. Cent per cent. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said the goal of life, prema punarto mahan, to develop love for God. Prem. Right? This is a very high level of devotion. Prema bhakti. Above bhava bhakti. Bhava leads to prema. So we have to develop that kind of love to be with Krishna. Otherwise, we may stay here in the material world. We're working, we're trying to become purified, we make a little progress, we make a bit more progress, we go on gradually, gradually. We need to make greater efforts. We have to really cry for Krishna. Right? Prabhupada's disciple, His Holiness Gaur Govinda Maharaj, he used to talk about creating a school for crying. He wanted people to, to train the devotees that they would cry for Krishna. So when we want Krishna so badly that we are crying for Krishna, then that is a good sign. You know, that is a sign we're really progressing. Why are we not crying? We're crying for money, we're crying for women, we're crying for fame, we're, we're crying for position, we're crying, you know, for this, so many things. Oh, somebody hit my car, we're crying, you know. Oh, somebody took my wallet, oh, we're crying. But we have to cry for Krishna. Are you able to cry for Krishna yet? Prabhu, are you able to cry for Krishna? So this is a problem, this is why we're here in the material world because, you know, we've, we've st we still have a lot of attachment to this world and we have to try to change that attachment, to give it all to Krishna, a hundred percent, as much as we can. And to help us to become attached to Krishna, we have Prabhupada. Although it's difficult for us to give 100% to Krishna, if we hold on to Prabhupada's lotus feet, then Prabhupada can take us back to Godhead. Right? We have to have faith in Srila Prabhupada that he can take us back to Godhead. So, yeah, I mean, no, people often ask this question, you ask, you know, it comes up all the time and it's the most 
difficult question to answer, you know, but Prabhupada's, Prabhupada's spiritual master also spoke about it. He gave the story of a, a, tala, a tala fruit. There's a tala fruit. So the fruit falls. A bird came and landed on the tree and when the bird landed on the tree, the fruit fell. So people were arguing why the fruit fell. Somebody said the fruit fell because the bird landed on the tree and it made the fruit fell. Somebody else said, no, the fruit fell because it was ripe. And somebody else comes along, they pick up the fruit, they eat it. <laughs> you know, while well, the others are all arguing about why the fruit fell, the one man comes along, he eats the fruit. So like that, why did we fall from the spiritual world? You know, we fell for this reason, that reason. And the other person, he's just going back to Godhead. He's not worried about how he got here, he just wants to get out. All right? So that's the idea. Our focus, our real attention should be thinking how to get out. Very hard to understand how we got here. Or when we got here. When we got here, Prabhupada said, just like a dream. You know, do you remember when you went to sleep last night? Do you remember the exact time? You went to sleep. You may remember when you lay down, but when did you go to sleep? You know, we lay down, but we don't remember exactly when we went to sleep. In the same way, we don't remember exactly how long we've been in this material world, and when we fell from the spiritual world. It's like that. This is it. You know, this is our dream. We're in this dreaming condition. And when we come out of the dream, that's back to God. So daydream, night dream. But after all the dreaming's over, then Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Kita. So we have some prasadam for everyone. <laughs>